All right, Coach, we had a little razzle-dazzle to start the game out last week against the Chargers. Obviously, looking at Johnny Townsend, you want to see his performance get better. And Johnny Townsend came out with a fake punt, 42 yards. And we realized what a good athlete this kid is. That's one way to get your punter going. I was actually, I was really mad on third and five. We missed a third down conversion. So I said, you know what, let's fake a punt. And we put Townsend back here. And if you watch Lee Smith on the left side of your screen, number 86, Lee Smith throws the key block. He's looking at number 32. He's either going to hook him or he's going to reach him. And then Johnny Townsend is going to walk up in there like he's punting it, and he's going to pick up Lee Smith's block and follow Eric Harris on a 42-yard run. And this guy's smoking. I, he's running like you, man, 20 miles an hour on the radar gun. He's had his moments where he struggled this year punting. But I think this punt – uh, knocked him back into reality. This guy's a great athlete. He's a great punter. He punted the ball extremely well in this game, and hopefully he continues to be a big weapon for yeah, us. Yeah, I know he was recruited as a baseball player, and I start thinking about what that play did for the crowd. You know, being on the sidelines, you know, Big Link and I are doing the keys of the game, and it was kind of flat. That play got your bench, got the crowd into it, kind of really changed the tone of the game when you did that play. Well, that's what you have to do. We've had a tough year in terms of field position. We've had, I don't know, eight games go by. We haven't started one drive in the opponent's plus 50 field position. So it's been hard to get good field position. And uh, that was a good way to go for it. That's what we did. Yeah, when you think about it, Coach, as you mentioned, only in the Cleveland Brown game did you start on the opponent's inside their territory. That means like every single drive, you need to go 80 yards, 75 yards. That's not easy to do. No, it's not. And it's really difficult when you fall behind, which we have done a lot this year, and you're in a predictable passing situation, and you have young offensive linemen, and you have a number of injuries at wide receiver. Uh, we needed that fake punt. Unfortunately, uh, we didn't score points, but um, that shows you the capability of Johnny Townsend. Yeah, I like it. Townsend, athlete, I love it. Um, you said to us last week there were going to be some changes on the defensive side of the ball. We're going to look at Markel Lee here. Uh, it, was this one of the changes you were talking about? Yeah, it was. Markel Lee moved over to the Sam linebacker here on the left side of your screen. He's a strong side linebacker. Uh, Emmanuel Lemure had been starting. We inserted Carl Joseph as a starter. But Lee had one of his best games. I think it was his best game as a Raider, personally. Here you see him falling back. Sometimes you got to play two gaps when you're a linebacker. You got to play your gap, and when that ball bounces, you got to bounce out, fall back, and make a tackle in another gap. That's big time play by Lee against one heck of a back. But he's gotten better and better. He's played a lot of football for us this year. But when you see the instincts, you see the fallback technique that Markell uses here in any impact tackle against Melvin Gordon, that's impressive. And we need that, Chris. We need a young linebacker in this organization to emerge. We've had a lot of linebackers mm -hmm. come and go, and sometimes the Sam linebacker's got to stand on the line of scrimmage and beat up a tight end and try to cross his face on some of these blitzes and cause some penetration, and, and that's what Lee does right there. He's got the size. He's got the strength to play on the line of scrimmage. He's got the athleticism to play off the line of scrimmage. He's from Wake Forest. Sharp guy. Now, I remember last year, he struggled, but you could see the talent. What's it like as a coach when you start to see the lights gone on, he's getting it, he has the talent, but in between the years, he's now understanding it? Well, it's a second year, and I've always said this. Second-year players show the most improvement. When you're a rookie, it's tough in this business. You're seeing the growing pains of two young tackles, Hurst, Hall, Nick Nelson, Cabinda, you're seeing some growing pains. But in year two, they've been through training camp. They've gained some confidence. They've gotten stronger. They know how the NFL works. I think that's what you're seeing with Markel Lee. You're seeing a guy that's right now asserting himself at a position where we desperately need him. There's such a difference when you get here versus college. And you can understand why guys, you can see why they would struggle in their first year. Oh, no doubt. And a lot of these guys come from major colleges. Some of these guys come from smaller colleges mm -hmm. like P.J. Hall and Brandon Parker, where the level of competition, the step up is really eye-opening. 
So it's a graduation process. It's mat maturity, like me. I've, I've had to mature, <laughs> like you. You have to mature in your business. I don't know if I've matured. Coach. I don't either yet, but these guys have gotten better. They've matured. They're becoming pros, and it's exciting. And we need young people in this organization, obviously, to step up from our draft classes, not only this year, but previous years. Well, let's talk about some Bruins, because you took a Bruin at left tackle, and the guy that he used to protect is this guy, Josh Rosen. Yeah, Rosen is dangerous, and much like many of our rookies, uh, he has had his growing pains at times. They've had a number of injuries on their offensive line, just like we have, and at times it's been tough on the kid. But when you see him right here with pressure beating down on him, and he has the poise to stand in here and make throws like this, that's impressive, man. Yeah. So he's got big-time arm talent. He's athletic. He's just a kid getting started. But what I like about him is his toughness. I mean, he throws three or four interceptions, two pick sixes against the Denver Broncos. He walks home that night, and his foot's in a boot. He can hardly walk. And then the next week, he beats the 49ers in a two-minute drill to win the game. So this kid's got a lot of arm talent. He's got a lot of toughness. And they're going to get better and better because of their young quarterback. You know, we saw with the guy last week, bravado. Philip Rivers has a ton of bravado. And that was kind of like the criticism of him coming out of UCLA. Maybe people thought he was too confident. And, and you're a quarterback guy. Don't you want that in your quarterback? You want that kind of bravado? Yeah, I do, especially if you're good. You know, I want a good quarterback, number one. I don't care if you got bravado or not. If you got great talent and you got the intangibles, the work ethic, you have the toughness to play, and the intelligence to play, and you're durable, that's what I want. But I do like a guy that has some fire and brimstorm that can bring the best out of his teammates. And sometimes you got to grow into that. It's hard to do as a rookie quarterback. Phillip Rivers is, is one of the all-time great in that category. How tough is it to play this position in this league? I mean, the, the pressure on you to play quarterback, so much is put on you, the praise when you win, when you lose, everybody's on you. It's the toughest position in sports. It is tough, and our quarterback's going through a lot right now. You know, we've had a number of coaches, a number of systems come and go. People don't want to hear it. Uh, we've had different offensive tackles this year, different offensive guards, ton of different receivers. Yeah. We have struggled at times on defense to get a lead, and uh, he's been able, I think, to consistently string good days together in the meeting room, good days together on the practice field. He's been a leader. He's been well-respected here, and uh, we continue to get better around a quarterback. I think that's when you see the best of all these players, and hopefully that's the case with ours. And we'll end on this. He's taking a lot of hits this year. He's showing some serious – Derek Carr's showing some serious toughness. He is. He's taking some hits, and, um, you know, again, that comes with this position. It's, you've seen Josh Rosen take a number of hits, and we've got to protect him better. We've got to obviously do a much better job calling plays to help him thrive. And uh, that's why we got to get back to work here at Townsend. We got a lot of work to do. All right, we're heading to Arizona, the Valley of the Sun. Let's go get a victory, you got Coach. It. Thanks, man. Appreciate you.